Let's pray. Father God, we thank and praise you for today. We give you honor and glory for all that is done in our hearing. We thank you that we are aware keenly of your presence with us, not only in this place where we're gathered, but we can sense your presence everywhere we go. We thank you, Father, that your spirit is our guide and our teacher, and he is our assistant. He will assist us in teaching and sharing the revelation that you have for us today as well as he will aid us in understanding that which have been, has been shared with us. We bless you, Father, as we bless one another. Yes. To greet each other is to greet you. To love each other is to love you. And to love ourselves. We thank you, Father, that in the name of our Lord, we pray and give you praise. Amen. Praise God. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live. Christ lives in me. The life that I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I will not set aside the grace of God. For if righteousness came by the law, then Christ died in vain. But I'm alive, both spiritually and physically, to bear witness that Christ did not die in vain. Shout, Lord. Amen, 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 amen. Bless you, Father. Bless you, bless you, bless you. Bless you for being here with us this morning. Amen. You know, I, I, I've kind of drafted you into this journey that I'm taking. I'm just, I am, let's see. Paul says, follow me as I follow Christ. That's a good way of saying it. Follow me as I follow Christ. I'm not dragging you to a place. I'm really just out there and you out there with me. Amen. Amen. So it is interesting for us all to be on one accord where we can understand what God is doing. And one of the things that is important, uh, at least I find it important, is to correct things that have misled us down the road of life and to connect the dots. <clears throat> Why do we go through what we go through as people, as individuals. Uh, years ago, uh, a teacher asked the question through his message, why do good things happen, or bad things happen to good people? And there was a journey down there of what could possibly uh, happen and what the reason is. One thing that, that, that is agreed on throughout time, it really doesn't matter what day is said, that <clears throat> your perception of life and how you think plays a great part in what happens to you. Your perception of life, how you think, plays a great part on what happens to you. Uh, things really don't happen by circumstance. On this planet, where we live, is governed by laws. The universe that we live in is governed by laws. So a lot of things we blame on something or somebody else when we are the one that actually did the movement that activated the law that is working in our life. You know, you, you, you do something, you say something, you act, you think a certain way, you release a law. And the laws are there for you. Amen. And it doesn't really need you to know that they're there. They're just going to work if you, <laughs> if you know they're working or not. You may not never, ever, 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 ever in your life heard about the law of gravity. And you get into your mind without knowing the law of gravity, go up to a tall building and say, I'm just going to walk on air from here and step off the edge. You will find out about the law of gravity whether you knew about it or not. And when you make a good splash on the ground, <laughs> man, the gravity needs you to splash to recognize that it works. 
God's truth works whether you know it or not. The knowing, you knowing it don't make it real. It is reality. God's truth is reality. God is reality. Whether you acknowledge him or not, he's not waiting on you to worship him before he is who he is. He is God and God alone. Now, a lot of people come away from the word God because uh, it's got negative connotations around the world. You know, like, like a lot of folk think that uh, uh, there are other gods and their God is better or greater than other gods. There's no other gods. There's no other gods. But that thought has been in the minds of men since time has been recorded. We live in different continents, different cultures, and each continent of the culture has a awareness or awakening of a greater being, and they call that greater being their God. Now, they may uh, assign some symbol to represent their God. Uh, they think their God is the God of agriculture because that's what they do. And, and they pray to the God of agriculture to make sure their crops grow and don't fail. And that they pray to the rain God, that the rain God, let rain fall down on them. Amen. And water their crops. And, 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 and so if the rain don't fall and the crops don't get watered, they think the God is upset. <laughs> so they want to find a reason for God being upset. Must be somebody in our village that upset God. Let's look around and see who could possibly be upsetting God. And then find out a family or someone and say, oh, you're the one upsetting our God. He's the, and so we're starving because of you. So they sacrifice that person to God to appease him. And then when the rain comes the next season of rain, they say, oh, that person is a saint because they pleaded with the God and they became the sacrifice that was necessary for the rain to come, for the crops to grow so that we can prosper. So then the villain becomes the saint. That's in different cultures, different languages. Everybody got their different way of thinking. But it's, it's interesting that we feel uncomfortable knowing that God is the God of all of creation. I, I'm concerned about the uncomfort of that knowledge. Why, 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 why are we jealous of God? Now, he's not jealous of us, but are we jealous because he loves everybody? Even the folk you don't like? He loves your enemy? <laughs> your enemy is not necessarily God's enemy. Amen. And it's, it's just, it, just, it just baffles me that we do that. So uh, we have attempted uh, this morning, and we'll just do it again, just rehearse it again. Uh, to go over the identification and characteristic of, of spiritual truth. God is spirit. He's not, he's not a body. He's spirit. He's not a body. And he is truth. God is truth. God is love. Amen. I'm trying to learn about love. I'm, I, I, I'm trying to get some love. I'm trying to become love. You are love. Come on. <laughs> I've been tossing in my mind this last week or so, and I even talked to a friend of mine about it early in the week about the scripture that Jesus learned obedience from the things he suffered. It's been running around my mind. You know, Jesus learned obedience from suffering. Jesus learned obedience from the things he suffered. And this was before the cross, before the beating, the learning of obedience. So what was he suffering that we may not have seen or known about? And seeing that he's an example of us and not for us, we must be suffering the same thing on the way of learning obedience. All right. And since that he came as a man, he has to have the opportunity to behave as a normal man. 
to think as a normal man. And then he has to have a choice to surrender his mind to God. So the learning, see, see, learning don't particularly come from you sitting and someone talking to you as much as it comes from your revelation you get from God. Because if you're just listening and taking notes from a teacher, you can forget what's said. But you can never forget an experience. When revelation comes to you, you won't forget it. You know the date, the time, what if the sun was out. You remember it all because it, it, it was impactful to you. So as I'm thinking, this, this is not necessarily the answer, but it could be something to consider. Him learning obedience had to be him stepping out of obedience. And as soon as you step out of obedience, there's a law working. And that law working is the law of death. I want you to understand, he got he got so proficient in living in obedience to his father, death could not touch him. To the point that he said, no man takes my life. Uh-huh. You got to get that. You got to understand what that, he, he, he's saying that as a man who is referencing a revelation of being a son of God. No man takes my life. Because, see, if there is a law of life that you work purposefully that sets off the law of death. Just like you stepping off a high building, thinking you're going to walk on air, and gravity kicks in to remind you, no, you're not an air walker. There is the law in place. If we step out of our divine design, there's a law waiting for us to work death. It's not a strange thing, it's a law. And for, and, and for some reason, we think we don't have to pay attention to laws. Amen. Praise God. We, we, we think, like, 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 we're all different and we, we are in a form. Now, your form that you're in, that meat suit you're in, may be allergic to certain things. Where the meat suit that I am in is not allergic to what your meat suit is allergic to. Uh-huh. Amen. Oh, yeah. It used to bother me that certain people could eat what they wanted and stay thin. I, I just get them under. I like they could just eat anything they want, eat anything they wanted, and never gain an ounce of weight. Uh-huh. If I pass by a chocolate cake, I would put on ten pounds. Come on, what's what's wrong with that? We we both got bodies, but their body. And my body is different. Their body has a high metabolism where mine is not working as diligent as theirs and anything that comes into this body that will put on weight does. Amen. I don't want to gain a whole bunch of weight and I want that thing that, that, come on now, that that will put weight on me. I want that that bread to give me a pot belly. I I, I like bread. Uh But I don't like exercise. So if I eat bread without exercise, I'm going to get a pot belly. Uh It's a law. I like to say it was the devil. The devil gave me the pot belly. The devil didn't give me the pot belly. Not unless his name is Will. I ate the bread. It wasn't through gunpoint. I ate the bread because I like the bread. But my body, the form that I am in, don't handle bread well. All right. Come on. Amen. Amen. Now, my spirit can eat anything and not gain no weight because it don't eat. It don't need no food. The body does. But see, that's not the thing. We got to realize that we, we are not subject to our bodies. And I believe that we have to learn 
how to control our appetites uh -huh. to master our lives. Yeah. All right. I'm talking something as silly as appetite or eating, but it's in behavior. Yeah. It's in doing things that you know is not good for you, but you do it anyway. Uh -huh. And you think just because you put it in quotes, I'm doing this in the name of Jesus. It's going to be all right. No, it's not. Come on. You're breaking the law. You got to learn. You have to learn. We, 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 we forget that our Heavenly Father is our Father. And because many people in our culture, in our community, don't know what fathers are, we don't recognize the fathering of our Heavenly Father. We know what mothers are. Mothers are compassionate. They're supposed to be. Mothers are nurturing. Mothers are forgiving. Mothers are soft. See, some mothers are not all mothers. Generally speaking, <laughs> there are some exceptions. But generally speaking, you can get anything from a mom. Like if you, if you run out of money, your mother told you to put a budget, you got a job, and, and you run out of money, you don't call your daddy, because your daddy's gonna say, you got a job, just wait till your next paycheck. Don't call me for no money. Mm -hmm. Amen. Just keep going to work. Learn to save, manage your own money. You don't, don't, I can't, I'm managing my money. I'm not, to manage my money is not to give you any. <laughs> but mothers are not like that. Mothers will buy a story. Mothers will buy a story. Mothers will buy a story and mothers will believe the story and believe, though you've never done it before, will believe you will pay them back. And this is the umpteenth time. Yeah, that's a word. That's a word. Umpteenth. <laughs> that's a word from our community. Umpteenth time that you didn't borrow. They say, oh, I'm going to get you back this time. I, I promise this time. And again, the little purse strings go out and they send you some money. Amen. But they know that when they release that money, they ain't coming back. Amen. It's just the formality of getting it. Amen. But fathers don't care. You know what to do, but you do refuse to do it. So when God fathers us, we don't recognize it as our father. We call it the devil. Mm. I'm gonna praise God all by myself. Y'all looking at me like God, God ain't he just you did it, you wrote the check. You made the bed. I'm here to coach you. And we got examples of that. One of my favorites is the prodigal son. He goes to his dad because he's all upset. He's, he's, he's tired of living on the state. And he's taking his daddy too long to die. He got plans. So I'm in a hurry. You're living too long. My youth is leaving. Cut me my portion of my inheritance. Give it to me now. That's what that means. Give me my inheritance now. You're living too long. I got a life to live. And so the father lovingly cuts him his inheritance. He takes his inheritance. He's a rich man. He goes into the city where he always wanted to go. He didn't want to be on the estate of his dad. He wanted to be in the city where the parties was, where everybody was doing coke and doing freak-offs and having a good time. <laughs> so he goes and he spends all his money. And then when he spends all his money, then the same folk he was partying with turned it back against him because he, even though he was partying with them, they recognized that he wasn't really one of them. All right. Amen. And now that they spent his money, they keep on partying, but they, they, they shun him. And now he's hungry. They give him a job. Where? The lowest job there is. In a pig pen. He got to feed the hogs, but they won't feed him. So he begins to share the hogs' food, the pigs' food. But then he comes to himself. He says, you know what? On my dad's estate, the servants live better than this. Yeah. 
I forfeited being a son by asking for my, my inheritance. Uh -huh. So I don't have another place. I've spent my inheritance. I spent my sonship already on this riotous living. But so I'll go back and ask to be a hired hand to work on my father's. I'm ready to go back now. I want you to understand something. Not one time did his father ever go to the city looking for him. Not once. But if that had been mama, she would have been down in that city. I'm going to get my baby. Come on, y'all. Y'all know it's true. She had been down there driving up, driving up and down the street trying to find her baby. Here, take this for you. Here, take this little dollar. Take, here, take this. Here, this will tide you over till you get to yourself. And he ain't learning nothing. Because for some of us, we got to learn from our mistakes. Mm, Y'all ain't saying amen to that, but that's the way it goes. And so he's on his way back to the father. But here's the good thing. The father always knew he was coming back. The scripture says God has always known that he will speak to us again face to face. He always knew it. Even when we departed to come into this form, he always knew that once again he will speak to us face, oh, y'all not listening to me, face to face. All we have to do is turn around and come to ourselves and remember our divine design. Come to yourself. That's where your power is. It's always been with you. You thought it was outside of you. The error and the suffering is trying to find your happiness outside of yourself. Within your created being, you already hold. You already won. You already won. Your victory is not outside of yourself. You got to see your victory lives with you. And in you, it has a voice. But you have drowned your voice of victory with all the outside voices trying to hypnotize you and believe that you are not quite enough, that God needs to do something else with you. You need one more blessing. Look at your neighbor and say, we are already finished. That's the truth. And he's giving you time to come to yourself. Now he won't let you stumble all the way back. The word says when he saw his son, what? A far off. Mm, mm, mm. He wasn't even close. He saw him coming back from afar. From afar. He didn't shorten the distance, but the distance got short. Because the father went to walk with him. So you got to understand that when you come to yourself, your father will come on your journey and come with you along the way. He won't let you come back all by yourself. But the way and the path, he's already cleared out for you because you are the royalty that represents him. You are his image and his likeness. So you notice that the path back home is a lot smoother than the path away from home. Oh, y'all listen to me. It's filled with blessings. There's a choir singing and rejoicing because you have come to yourself. And I tell you, by that experience, you will never leave home again. But not everybody going to be happy. Y'all got to hear me. With you coming back home. You got the folk that ain't never left. Yes. <laughs> the other brother that never left caught an attitude. Why are you throwing this party? Now he must have been keeping tabs. 
Because the daddy never brought up what the son did, but the older brother did. He was out there living a riotous life with all them homongous and getting them free cones. Why he gonna let him come back home? Throw him a party. You never throw me a party. And I ain't never left. I've always been faithful. And if I said, all of this has always been yours. You could have had a party anytime you wanted and invited all your friends. It was your choice not to have a party. But we're celebrating because my son, your brother, who was lost, who lost his way, has found his way. You ought to be celebrating too. So if you get upset because someone has done something that you chose not to do and you have judged it as the wrong thing to do and they come to themselves and it seems like they are now enjoying the blessing. Come on, talk to me now. Uh -huh. Don't you get an attitude. Come on, come on. Because you refuse to take part of what is already yours. It's already yours to be blessed. It's already yours to live well. It's already yours right. to walk in divinity. It's already yours to be God's divine design. Why aren't you being what you've already been positioned to be? There's no glory in you holding out and not eating and not fasting and not working the right thing. You ain't no glory in that. You need to do what you want to do. Have a party. Come on, y'all. You need to celebrate where you live. Don't be mad because somebody else is getting the party. Amen? Amen. Truth is like that. It's universal. Yes. It's not denominational. All right. <laughs> it's not doctrinal. It's universal. It, is universal. it fits into every teaching, every lifestyle. Truth don't need to be defined. Truth is truth all by itself. Amen. It's not opposed to anybody. Don't have no enemies. Truth is truth. And if truth is God, then God don't have no enemies either. Amen. Say this with me. I'm an infinite being. I am an infinite being. And I am his truth. And I am his truth. So quit doubting what you already are. Whatever you think you need, you already got. Uh, say that. <laughs> say it again. Quit playing like God is in some distant future. You're saying God is in a distant future, but he's a right now guy. So how can he be in a distant future? Come back over here. Uh -huh. If he's always present, how can God be in a distant future? Come back over here. My camera don't want to follow me. It's trying to look at Bobby. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Y'all learned something today? Yeah. That's enough for today. Amen. <laughs> for those of you watching this by video, we just want to remind you, God has plans for your life, and none of those plans include defeat. Amen. That's the truth. And I thought about it. I said, Jesus was beat with 40 minus 1 stripes, 39 stripes that looked like one. And I thought, isn't this interesting? 39 characteristics of truth that is liberating, that will set us free. Isn't it wonderful? Isn't it? There we go. I got it. I'm still black. Isn't it? Black man from Texas. Isn't it wonderful to be free? Yes, it is. Amen. Don't be nervous because you're doing well. Don't get weary from being blessed. I, isn't that wonderful? That's in the Bible. Don't be weary from well-doing, which means you're doing well. <laughs> Just think about that. Quit making yourself sad. Don't accept, just don't accept sadness. Don't, if it comes in the door, you don't belong here. The neighbor's house is over there. Because in this house, there is no sadness. Amen. Amen. 
This house does well, and everything in this house is blessed. You breathe the air, and you're blessed. Because the miracle of beating hearts is in this house. The miracle of breathing is in this house. The miracle of movement is in this house. Do you not know the body that you live in is a miracle body? Because no one can give an explanation of where your life comes from. There's no artificial intelligence that can ever replace your intelligence, your organic intelligence. You are the design of your heavenly father. And quit referring to that body as your body. It's an it. You are a spiritual being. You cannot be sick. You cannot die. It's an impossibility. The only thing that can die is your physical body, but you cannot die. But because you've identified with it so long, it seems foreign to you what I'm saying to you. But you keep practicing it. You keep on, t- you keep on everybody, I'm an infinite being. I'm an infinite being. Pretty soon, you're going to hear yourself say that enough that the revelation of the truth will be the truth. Amen. Amen. And all that energy that has been seeping from you, all of a sudden, be started coming back to you. You'll find out that you can move a little bit faster. You thought you was getting tired, but now you got that energy. It didn't come back because you're feeding truth to your soul. You're feeding truth. Your soul needs to be fed truth. And it can be calibrated. Now you know the, 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 the conscious characteristics of spiritual truth. You put the calibration and the characteristics together, you're going to grow stronger and stronger in Jesus' name. Come on, Pastor. Amen.